Othman El Baludi, Belgium's biggest bad guy, always one step ahead of arrest. A real estate tycoon, or one of the largest drug lords in the low countries enjoying a deep connection with the notorious Kinahans? The Belgian police are after him. The US Treasury has sanctioned him. But he remains elusive. While hiding in Dubai in a Kinahan cartel bolt hole, he successfully operates an expansive coke port business at the Antwerp port. Apparently, on the run from authorities, he's not living quite meagerly. With 11 lavish properties under his name, he has a net worth higher than the combined wealth of Kevin De Bruyne and Eden Hazard. But he refutes all the claims tying him to drugs vehemently. But the authorities are damn sure about it. The Antwerp Public Prosecutor's Office and the federal police have been searching for him for years, whose organization is said to have imported 16 tons of coke through the port of Antwerp in less than a year. Who is this man? Welcome to Narcotic Underworld. Let's dive into the story of Belgium's biggest bad guy, a filthy rich drug lord, Othman El Baludi, who always stays one step ahead of Belgian authorities. A drug baron with an almost perfect legal facade. Othman El Baludi, a 36-year-old thug, is one of Belgium's biggest drug barons with ties to rival gangs. Born to Moroccan immigrants in 1986 in Borgerhout, Antwerp, he's the eldest of the El Baludi family. El Baludi started his criminal career in his young teens as a courier, carrying drugs out of the Antwerp port. Quite a humble beginning to a flourishing underworld empire. Interestingly, not many drug couriers managed to climb the coke ladder. They remain the dispensable foot soldiers of the underworld, staying at the bottom of the barrel. However, Baluti wasn't one of them. He crept into the port at night to ferry off the shipments out of the containers for his clients, just like his fellows. But he had become a master in his trade. Money was rolling in for him. But unlike his sidekicks, he didn't splurge it on designer clothing or fast cars. The couriers faced the highest risk in the coke distribution chain with the lowest payoff, mostly a few thousand euros. This is peanuts compared to the buttload of cash they bring to their clients. Othman adopted a smart and strategic approach to his job. Rather than being paid in cash, he demanded to be paid in product. This meant exponential profits. A kilo of co before reaching the Antwerp port cost somewhere between 2,000 to 4,000 euros. But as soon as it arrives at the port safely, it jacks up to the tune of 25,000 euros. Apart from reaping the profits, Othman became a drug seller on the go with this in-kind mode of payment and cultivated many useful connections as well. Soon, from getting the coke out of the port in the dark of night, he became the recruiter of thugs who would do the same. The dumb guys didn't ask him what he demanded from his clients. Hence, Othman's profits kept mounting exponentially and his smuggling career skyrocketed in a brief time. While he erected an empire in the dark days of the underworld, he kept on a facade as a dealer in luxury watches. By the end of 2015, everything was going seamlessly, business booming and proliferating. But then came 2016. He started to flicker on the Belgians' police radar. Finally, he got arrested at the Brussels airport after his donation to a Muslim school in Antwerp was traced to illegal sources. 
As soon as he was released on probation, he escaped to Dubai. But his escape didn't interrupt his raging co dealing enterprise. He keeps running his operations remotely while investing in real estate in Dubai. Along with being a real estate tycoon in Dubai, he's also the most wanted man in Belgium. From drug lord to real estate tycoon. From a mere drug courier to running a thriving co smuggling enterprise to becoming a real estate tycoon. The journey was nothing short of an odyssey for Othman El Baloudi. While he's reportedly holed up in the infamous Kinahan cartel, he also remains the owner of various luxurious properties. Now, why is this relevant? Stay tuned to find out. Real estate is a lucrative business and churns out loads of money for investors. In 2018, there came a leak from a database containing property and residency data in Dubai. The database contained, among other things, information about sanctioned individuals, organized crime individuals, and shady characters. Othman's name was in the database. After moving to Dubai, the thug seemed to have sold millions worth of properties. His name was connected with 11 properties worth 8.5 million in townhouses, luxury hotels, and apartments. After the database leak, Othman claimed once again that he had nothing to do with the narcotics underworld. Othman had grounds to claim this because the Belgian authorities were unable to prosecute him for any such charge. El Baloudi laid low but kept on with his business and made it harder for the authorities to gather concrete evidence. However, it couldn't go on like that. In 2021, the police seized multiple shipments containing 35,000 kilos Allegedly, Othman was the mastermind behind these shipments. But how did these seizures and raids come about? The hoodlums involved in co smuggling use Sky ECC phones for communication. Sky ECC was a secure messaging app cherished by the drug barons in the underworld as impregnable, but they were wrong big time. Cops infiltrated the platform and were able to tap a billion messages, which led to drug seizures and arrests. One seized shipment of 11,000 kilos of co led to a seizure of two other very big shipments, one of 16,000 kilos of co and the other 8,000 kilos. And the mastermind behind the smuggling of this staggering amount of white gold was reported as Othman El Baloudi. However, Othman denied any involvement. The year 2022 turned out to be good for the Belgian police. They had finally found potentially incriminating evidence against Othman. After conducting 40 raids in Belgium, Germany and the Netherlands, they managed to arrest 16 people. Then came March 10, 2023, when the Belgian police demanded a nine-year sentence against Othman for importing coke and money laundering. They also demanded eight years for his brothers, Nordin and Younes LB. Prosecutors are confident that they have a strong case based on the Sky ECC messages and the intercepted shipments. According to them, Othman was better known as Big Brother. Here's a glimpse of the textual conversation that happened between Nordin and Othman. Some messages sent by the Big Brother to Nordin were as follows. Big Brother, can I send money? That 100 you did was successful. Nordin, smiley face. Big brother, you had 1.3 million, min 200 is 1.1. Now 90 times 29 is 3.7 million. Can I send that tomorrow? Sorry, 650k, I forgot as investment. 3,150,000. Nordin, okay. Big brother, 
I have three million, all hundreds. Nordine, bro, might want one million over there, so I don't have to knock on your door every time. Big brother, do you also have a spot where I can stash another 10 million just for me? Ostensibly, the calculation by Othman in the message is about the co shipment of 100 kilos. 6,500 euros per kilo is the investment of 650,000 he mentioned while in 90 times 29. He's alluding to 90 kilos at a wholesale price of 29,000 euros per kilo. Many more messages about the co shipments, along with other things, would be presented to court in a bid to put Othman behind bars. Othman maintained that they would never prosecute him in this case. There's just no evidence, he said. However, an even bigger blow came to Othman a few months later when the U.S. Department of Treasury slapped sanctions on him, his brother and associate Yusuf Beneza, calling him a high-level drug trafficker. The statement of the Office of Foreign Assets Control, OFAC, announced the sanctions on Othman's international criminal organization that smuggles significant quantities of coke through shipping containers at the Antwerp port. It's also stated that El Baluti's money laundering and narcotic supply chain networks are linked to China-based businesses. The Treasury Department also accused Othman of ties with South American coke suppliers, including notorious Ecuadorian drug kingpin Wilder Emilio Sanchez Farfan, also known as Gato Farfan, who got arrested in 2023. Hoffman's brother, Yunez El Baluni, was accused of managing his brother's drug trafficking organization. Notably, he was sentenced in absentia to eight years in January 2023. It was the same week his niece fell victim to the garage door shooting. Yusuf Beneza was accused of assisting him in establishing companies for legal cover. All three of them are wanted by the Belgian police for co trafficking. There are grave consequences to these sanctions. It means that every property, bank account, car, and business that has connections to the U.S. is seized. The Turf Wars Drugs and violence go hand in hand, and when it comes to a strategic port with access to the most lucrative coke market, like Antwerp, it becomes a hotbed of both. Drug lords fight each other over lost shipments and engage in turf wars to advance power. Being one of the major underlords in Antwerp, Othman also could not avoid the sine qua non of drug dealing, i.e. violence. Only in his case, it was his family who bore the brunt of the dangerous trade he partook in. It was a typical November night when Yunez El Magico LB was coming out of a gym. He was planning to have dinner at his sister's house. He picked up his phone and made a call to let her sister know she was on his way. But things went south soon when his sister heard Yunez screaming for help and being dragged into a car before the call broke. She called the police right away. The investigation began. Then Othman told the Antwerp police that the kidnappers demanded tens of millions of euros from him for his brother's release. Younes was taken to France by his captors where he escaped from the apartment after five weeks of captivity. He called the local police for help and reported that the Dutch drug lord Hossein A. Susan was behind the kidnapping. Hossein wanted to punish El Baluti for being sidelined from the coke trafficking route. Apparently, drug dealers preferred dealing with Othman to doing so with him. Now, Hussein A. Susan might ring a bell for you. He is the notorious Macro Mafia underlord who was a major participant of the infamous Macro War. This decades long war erupted over a lost bag of coke shipment. 
Ace Hussein was the rival of Gwinnett Martha, the drug lord of the Macro Mafia, who was shot dead in 2014 in a turf war. According to witnesses, he was shot 10 to 15 times. Nevertheless, El Baluti refuted the allegations that the kidnapping was in any way linked to him or drug trafficking. He maintained that the kidnappers, just like those who took the Jenk child, assumed that his family would be able to cough up the ransom money. He said that he did not have that kind of money in the first place, but even if he had, he wouldn't pay. I would never pay not even a euro, he said. The kidnappers threatened him that they would do to Eunice what they did to Applicator Bowker, the Jew. Bowker had disappeared and was allegedly killed after a coke seizure by the Antwerp police. But Othman didn't budge, even when the police asked him to arrange the amount. Finally, this ordeal ended when Eunice escaped. Rumors started to roam that Othman had either several millions or kilos of coke in ransom. However, Othman refuted all these claims in an interview. He emphasized that his brother escaped on his own. The Dutch police managed to arrest four kidnappers from Paris. They were Hassin Salmi, Mohamed Kanut, Abdu Sako, and Rachid Bellarbi. They were later extradited to Belgium. The next event was quite an unfortunate one, as it culminated in the death of an 11-year-old girl, Ferdos El Baluti's niece. In the turf wars, a risky pattern has emerged, which is targeting the homes of those concerned as sending a warning signal. It was bound to go awry someday and that crept in on the El Baluti family one cold evening. Three shots were fired at the garage door of a home. They struck the child who was rushed to the hospital, but she succumbed to injuries and could not survive. According to the police, it was a warning signal gone wrong. However, Othman denied the allegations that he was the intended target or that he had anything to do with it. Othman has so vehemently denied the claims of his involvement with drug trafficking or the underworld, and yet there was a message from him from a member of a prominent Mexican cartel, the Sinaloa Cartel. Watch the message in this clip. Coincidentally, the video was released on the same day when the U.S. Treasury imposed sanctions on El Baluti and his two companions. It featured a Mexican man in a cap who claimed to be representing the Sinaloa cartel leader Ismael El Mayo Zambada. He said in this video, Just as I have the balls to come and make this video with my face, Mr. Baluti, I am also standing with my people from Mayo Zambada. Do you understand me? So check the information carefully. I'm sorry, Mr. Baluti, that I sent people to the door of one of your people to settle a debt, he said apologetically. Then the tone becomes more menacing. The man tells El Baluti to show the video to the Mexicans in Europe. They'll tell you who I am. I have the balls to show my face to you here. You need to get serious. But debts are debts of honor, debts of men. This business is for men not fags. Then I ask you to get your act together with that debt, sir. In advance, I apologize again. But, well, you also get serious. There we are. Take care of yourself, Baluti family. While what this debt entails, this threatening video does not bode well for the people of Antwerp for El Baluti's family is not the only one to bear the consequences. Law and order in Antwerp and the people of the city are another casualty of his perilous dealings. Explosions and gunshots reverberate the city's streets every other day, inundating people's hearts with panic and fear. That wraps up the story featuring Belgium's bad guy who keeps eluding the long arm of the law. But for how long? Only time will tell.